today. Joe Biden is looking at how to federally mandate the COVID vaccine for everyone. The DOJ threatens Texas with legal action over migrant transportation, and there's actual talk of porn for children. Yes, it's Friday, and we've got a lot coming up today. It all starts right now. Happy Friday. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Uh, today is going to be a good one because we've got a lot of hot topics to, to come. But uh, I also want to introduce to you, um, I am happy to say that I have two Blaze TV contributors at the table. We've got Yaku Bullions, now a Blaze TV contributor. Thank you. Also host of the Yaku Bullions show. Happy to be Yay. officially I know part I, of the family. I feel like we should yeah, yeah, have amazing. like a, a cake uh, or something. Thanks to, the, thanks to all the... <laughs> The amazing powers that be, and you, Sarah. Thanks uh, to all you people who wrote the reviews saying that Yaku was one of your favorites. I know, I'm there, just glad that's to be what here, it but is. it's really, it's an honor. It's an amazing place. Yeah, we're happy to yeah. uh, have you in as part of the family. Also, of course, Blaze TV contributor Eric July, uh, who, again, is, he, it's still weird to see you in that ring, Eric. <laughs> still a wedding still ring. Weird to weird. He's, he's still married so far. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's no, been yeah. like a week, so they, they that's ain't. awesome. They still like each other. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's get to the headlines of the day. We've got a lot on the topic of vaccinations, vaccine mandates, uh, mask mandates. So I know I have the right gentleman at the table to discuss the matter at hand. Um, so Joe Biden came out yesterday and he said a couple of different things. Number one, he said that states and cities uh, should be using federal rescue funds to provide $100 payments as incentive for individuals to get vaccinated against the virus. Um, and he, you know, he's like, well, this is how we get put the virus behind us, which again, I don't understand. I don't think that anyone who is looking in reality is thinking that we can just get rid of the virus. We can't put the virus behind us, much like we can't put the flu virus behind us. The seasonal flu is not behind us. We will always have some sort of a seasonal flu every uh, every season. But nonetheless, Joe Biden, uh, he said a whole bunch of, I mean, he's Joe Biden. So you know that he said a whole bunch of garbage and nonsense. But let me play for you first, Joe Biden, um, basically saying... <laughs> If you didn't think that uh, Nancy Pelosi and all of the other lawmakers were dramatic enough, listen to Joe Biden saying, look, you don't have to be unvaccinated. You don't have to die. It doesn't have to be that way. Watch. Last month, a study showed that over 99 percent of COVID-19 deaths have been among the unvaccinated. Ninety nine percent. This is American tragedy. People are dying and will die who don't have to die. If you're out there unvaccinated, you don't have to die. <laughs> Read the news. You'll see stories about unvaccinated patients in hospitals. As they're lying in bed, dying from COVID-19, they're asking, Doc, can I get the vaccine? And the doctors have to say, sorry, it's too late. That's not fear mongering at all. <laughs> I know. Jesus. It's just like, wow. I don't have to I mean, die. Doubling wow. down. I, I know. Mean, doubling down. It, which, again, I just don't understand because it's like, I, do you not think that these people ever exit their homes? Do you not think they see the world around them? They see that like people are not just dying in the streets. There is not just constant death and destruction and despair happening around them. I, I just like if the unvaccinated thought that they were going to die, they might go get the vaccine already. You wouldn't have to pay them $100 each. You wouldn't have to uh, direct uh, $350 billion to help pay for those $100 incentives, which is how much the Treasury Department has released. So, and okay, I, I wanna get your thoughts, gentlemen, but let me, let me play one more for you before we get into the conversation, uh, which really was the one that set me off, which is Joe Biden saying that uh, they're still looking at whether or not they can do a federal mandate for this particular vaccine watch. Why not um, push for vaccine mandates in states, private companies, schools? Do you want to see those entities pass vaccine mandates? Well, I, I'd like to see them continue to move in that direction. And that's why I'm, I pointed out. I had asked the Justice Department to determine whether that is they're able to do that legally. And they can. 
Local communities can do that. Local businesses can do that. It's still a question whether the federal government can mandate the whole country. I don't know that yet. Uh, uh, I think I have the answer to that. I think it comes in the Constitution. Um, I'm pretty sure the Constitution is very clear. Um, but I also would say that um, it, these are the same people who called Trump a fascist all the time. No matter what he did, Trump was a fascist. And now you have the president of the United States of America saying he's looking at whether or not he can do a federal mandate for a vaccine that has not yet been tested long term, that has not gone through the same rigorous process that the other vaccines have. And by the way, uh, all these vaccines are made by manufacturers who cannot be sued if they kill you or your family members. But Trump was the fascist. And not just a fascist, it was gross overreach of power with mm -hmm. Trump, right? Mm -hmm. I want to just highlight a couple things. First of all, the president of the United States just told the public, watch the news. Right. right. Is he getting his information from the news? It sounds like it. It sounds mm -hmm. like he drinks from CNN. Secondly, what he's really saying is, because the answer is no. No, you can't federally mandate any medicine. You can't federally mandate hardly jack in this country. We're a republic run by states. But this is what he's really saying. I'm asking my cronies, I'm asking my cabal to check in how we can manipulate yes. U.S. law, yes. change the law in front of the Americans so that we can jab them in the arm. That's what he's really saying, uh, you know, Eric. He's saying, mm -hmm. I'm, we're just trying to look into it. How can we hoodwink you and, mm -hmm. and blame you? The president of the United States doesn't know these answers. That's right, because he shouldn't be the president of the United States. OK, he's incompetent. He can't run. He couldn't run a lemonade stand for crying out loud and make a profit. OK, so so this is this is the stuff. If it goes over your head where they slip it into the system and you go, how did this happen? It's like wake up America. This is their mm -hmm. M.O. Mm -hmm. They literally will go as far as trying to change the law to go. Well, how can we manipulate this thing so we can't actually federally mandate this, right? Because they know places like Texas and Florida, right? And Christine Noma saying, not happening. Right. We're not locking down, you know? And they know that. They know. They know they're going to lose a grip on a large portion of America, right? And so it, this, is, this is insane. This is, it, this is basically moving towards socialism. Eric. Look, uh, there's so many angles I want to take with that. First and foremost, I, I take a lot of issue with the whole fear mongering it is that he did during the first statement. I mean, which he's basically suggesting as if being unvaccinated means that you're going <laughs> to die as if COVID-19 is a death sentence right. in that regard. Right. Now, look, I totally understand what the government is saying. Um, I know what the media is saying, CNNs of the world. I know the fear monger that they've been doing for the last year and some change in which they've hyped this virus to be basically apocalyptic when it's everything but that. But you can look at their own data. You can look at everything it is around you. That's simply not how it works. we got people at this damn table that have had it and are still alive because it's not a death sentence. In fact, there are things that you can get, things that can happen to you that will generally impact you a lot worse than what COVID will, depending on what health and age demographic it is that you are. In. So the fact that they're still fear mongering like that proves that they do believe that the American people are stupid. And unfortunately, a lot of them are stupid enough to believe that. On the other hand, he, of course, he's going in the direction of the federal mandate. And just like what Yaku was saying, when he's saying like that's basically what he's doing, where he's trying to figure out how to weasel his way into it being a federal mandate effectively. And it doesn't always have to be something that is direct. I said this when that conversation first started happening. I don't believe that it'll happen in by way of a like literal federal mandate where it's like, OK, yeah. it's illegal for you to get to not be. Uh, it's illegal for you to be unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. I don't think that'll happen. What will what they'll at least attempt to try to happen is what the lady that was asking in the question was talking about. Well, you look at the businesses and all of that sort of stuff. So the government says, OK, well, we'll tie we'll tie this funding. We'll allow you to exist. But you have to require your employees to get vaccinated. You have to uh, like require that your patrons get vaccinated. That sort of stuff is more so what I think will end up happening. But if America looking at that. And I hopefully if the if the gun issue didn't blow your head off, uh, uh, metaphorically speaking, uh, when it comes to this, hopefully this does it for you. Like I know guys like myself, the libertarians, the the anarcho capitalists like myself talk a lot about decentralization, but federal government from state. 
Yeah. I think this is a conversation that a lot of conservatives need to start genuinely mm. having mm. because you're seeing that the federal government, really no matter who's in charge, but the federal government certainly does not have what's in your best interest. You have a lot of people that are ruling over you that like the Hollywood, the Hollywood elites, yeah, the coastal elites, the New York elites, all of those guys, people in Washington that are ruling over you that couldn't be anything further from you from a cultural or uh, standpoint. Yet, unfortunately, they, they have a lot of power mm. and they have a lot of influence. So I know that that whole, you know, we got a lot of guys here even on the program that, hey, we talk about saving the republic and I get it. But when we get to where they are actually considering now, they might not be able to pull it off, but they're actually considering mandating you have something injected in, in your some body. form or fashion, whether it's direct or indirect. Yes. Right. So either either okay. way, it's yeah. a problem. And I think we need to start having this honest conversation. It may be, make a lot of us uncomfortable. I get it. But we need to start having it because you see that at minimum, the federal government does not have what's in your best interest in mind. And they, of course, are moving towards a more socialistic, fascistic, I repeat myself, state. Eric, I'm saying shrink that sucker <laughs> so small, right? You shrink it like a cancer yeah. because it's a cancer. That's exactly the what it is. The federal government is a cancer. Shrink it, give powers to the states. And you're going to watch people's eyes open up because you have people step up. It's just a real quick question. What did the federal government say to Coca-Cola? Okay, to Coca-Cola. We're now going to stop you from putting sugar into any ch federally mandate, you know, from children to be able to consume sugar, mm -hmm. right? Because they're killing more people with sugar. Absolutely. And COVID could ever kill people. Obesity is insane, right? Death by sugar, right? No, you'd never see that because it's the cronies. You've got a Hollywood studio who announced this week that you cannot produce content or ever be distributed by them unless you and all your employees, now they come in to tell you how to run your business, mm -hmm. are vaccinated. And that's mm -hmm. how they're going to do yep. it. Choke travel. Yep. You can't travel. Yep. You can't X, Y, Z, right? And so this is, this is bad. And, that, and that's bad. what people need to pay attention to. Like I said, they'll try to do it the indirect way. Effectively, it's the same thing. Effectively, right. it's basically it's the you, outcome. Yes, yeah, the same thing, but it's not as direct. And that's the way they're going to try to kind of soften everybody up to make. The, oh, it's not. We're not actually forcing you to get it, which is making your life a living hell in the event that you don't. Right. So right. it's the same thing um, uh, effectively. And that's the problem. And it's not even like the, we're talking about actual private actors or private institutions doing what it is that they want to do with their own private property. Because generally we talk about like the, uh, the, the feds or local, even the government, state governments that are actually being involved in this sort of stuff mm -hmm. and when it comes to funding to pay for play we see this all the time where it's like okay you want this grant you want this subsidy you want this money you uh, want us to keep us off of your back okay you need to do what it is that we tell you and now we're talking about the jet and they'll always also include public shaming with the whole black lives matter thing and walking mm -hmm. into people but you see bruce arians is kicking against you know tampa bay back in the air saying we're not going to put a a bracelet for my players so that the press can arrest right. them? Are right. you out of your mind? Right. But that's what they will, that, those are the tactics that yeah. they will go towards. I, and of course we have this uh, leadership who is insisting that you uh, be mandated to get a vaccine to inject something into your body. Also that you cover your face now, even if you've been vaccinated, which they said was the key to not wearing a mask. Now you have to wear a mask anyway. So you have those same leaders, including Nancy Pelosi, who we just reported yesterday. There was a memo that came out that uh, Nancy Pelosi, who would be handling this, has a, had instructed Capitol Police to arrest visitors and staff members who are not wearing masks on the premises. And of course, you have that same Nancy Pelosi who was caught uh, taking pictures with people and was like, oh, well, we got to take our mask off for one of these pictures. Watch. What is this live long and prosper crap? What is she doing with her hand? Oh, what? Yeah, I, love, I what? love that you saw that. What is she, I don't know, maybe Trek it's a fan? new cabal sign, or maybe this is the new Illuminati going, <laughs> I pledge allegiance to. But Adrena Chrome. I, I mean, know. thank God we finally have someone acknowledging that this virus is so smart that it does not attack you when you're smiling for pictures. Everybody knows that. It's called science, okay? Yes. So thankfully, we have Nancy Pelosi here reminding us that if you go to a hair salon to get your hair done, it does not attack you. If you smile for pictures, it does not attack you. If you are a liberal elite 
COVID obviously does not attack you because it is such a smart virus. I want to bring one more thing into the conversation, guys, before um, we have to go to break, which is a tweet that I actually just saw as we were walking on set. And it just, it just, everything is such a clown world right now. It's just such a great representation of that. So this is a tweet, you know, you guys were talking about Joe Biden saying, mm -hmm. watch, watch, watch TV, watch the news. Don't you see what the news is reporting? Here's some of the crap that the news is reporting. This is from CNN. It says vaccination alone won't stop the rise of variants. And in, in fact, could push the evolution of strains that evade their protection, researchers warned. And then in the next sentence, it says they said people need to wear masks and take other preventative steps until almost everyone is vaccinated, except that they just said in the sentence above vaccination alone won't stop the rise of the variants. But this is and could push the evolution of strains that <laughs> evade their protection. So which one is it, you dumb idiots? I can't anymore. Like nothing that you guys are saying makes sense. All these people were told if they got vaccinated, they could stop wearing masks. Now you're telling them to wear masks again. Now, again, this is the, the, the true liberal way. You tell them uh, to do something. It doesn't work. And your answer to that is to just keep doing that thing more. And then somehow it will magically work. But at the same time, they're telling you we're going to get the virus behind us. If you read the top yeah. sentence, I thought, you, I thought you had a magic potion to eliminate the virus. This is what I think. To work at CNN... You, you must only be able to have two brain cells, okay? And then one falls off, one glitches, and then you just can't expect these people to make sense. How could we? Yeah. We, should have, we should have pity on them. How could we expect them to actually not contradict themselves in the same paragraph? It right? I mean, it must be hard it's walking hard. around trying to work with that. It's very hard. Brain no, it's hard cells. to think. I don't know. Um, all right, we, we've got to take a break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Bonner Wines. So if you are like me and you are ready for happy hour, I mean, it's Friday, so I can say that, right? Um, but maybe you're also like me and you like to make sure you're a little bit healthy, right, from time to time. Okay, well, Bonner Wine has wines that are 10 times healthier than regular wines. So in Argentina, they make this really dark red uh, wine from these Malbec grapes that are grown at 9,000 feet. They've lab tested them and they've found that they contain up to 10 times the levels of a longevity and heart health nutrient. It's called resveratrol. So resveratrol, it's great for your heart. It's great for your brain health. Uh, and it's great for you to live a longer, healthier life. The wines also have 90% less sugar, fewer chemicals, fewer additives. And uh, I got to tell you, they taste delicious, especially with a great medium rare steak, but only medium rare. We accept nothing else at this program. Uh, I'm telling you, you're going to want to jump on this deal. They keep flying off the shelves. I love them. Everyone I've talked to loves them. You got to try them out. Go to cowgirlwine2021.com. You can get 50% off of their best Malbecs and 50% off of the shipping. It's a great gift if you have anyone to give a gift to in your life, especially yourself. Okay, cowgirlwine2021.com. That is cowgirlwine2021.com. By the way, before we get off of uh, the COVID vaccine and mandates and mask mandates and all of that, uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott just yesterday actually signed an executive order that, prohib that prohibits mask mandates or COVID-19 vaccine requirements from government agencies and municipalities statewide. Uh, now, I will say um, I would like to just thank Chad Prather our friend here at Blaze TV, Chad Prather, for challenging Governor Abbott because it seemed that he didn't get bold in any of his stances until he became challenged in the primary and also that Governor Ron DeSantis started making the actual tough decisions and Governor Abbott started trying to ride those coattails. But nonetheless, thankfully, here in Texas, uh, he did seem to be somewhat strong on banning Matt. Now, he didn't say like stores can't require right, it, right. right? Which I would actually like to come to see him come out and say, to I know it's point, a, yeah. I know it's tricky because it's a private business, but uh, well, so what are your, the, the, the libertarian at the table, what are your thoughts on that? Because I feel like when you're talking about like putting a, a device over how you actually live and breathe oxygen, I just kind of feel like that's kind of crossing the line. Well, I, I don't, uh, but I will say this to start, and that's a great question. To start, it's just even pathetic from a libertarian standpoint that the government has to ban itself from banning 
or, or basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. It, it, It's kind of weird, definitely considering Band who we're talking about. Orders, yeah, it has yeah. to like stop itself, like yeah. cut right. its own hand <laughs> off, yeah. basically, uh, before they start intruding on right. people's private uh, 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 property rights. Look, now I, I believe that, and, and, and just looking at the scope, maybe not for the Californians and the New Yorks of the world. Those are guys are in their own freaking planet. But with everywhere else, definitely in areas like Texas, I don't believe that um, businesses, most of them for that matter, would even require that. Now, do they have the right as far as I'm concerned? Of course. Do I think it's stupid? Do I think it sucks? Yes. But the thing about it, like when we talk about that in, in, in context, like, for example, when we discuss uh, like different grocery stores mm -hmm. or, or, or retail stores that have been requiring it, a lot of that pressure has come yes, from, from, from the government. From the government. Yes. 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 From it, the government. It's very exactly. much like, it's just coercion. It's right. when, it's it's when it comes from perfect, the government. Perfect yeah. term yeah. to use yeah. is that's exactly what it yeah. is. It's coercion. Yeah. It's what they're doing. And so the businesses, whether it be with um, sort of being liable for any sort of uh, somewhat like an outbreak or something, they decide they don't want to have to deal with that. But again, that pressure is almost exclusively mm -hmm. coming from the state yeah. right because think about it even right now when it became okay it didn't take long from basically everywhere you were going they were yeah, like gone. well yeah. okay i guess we're not gonna have mass some of them so, need, but it only lasts for like a couple of weeks so yeah. let me so then let me let me backtrack here let me let me say this i think that it would be i would be perfectly fine with i would be so happy if Texas would at least, and a lot of other states, right, would at least pass something saying business owners cannot be held liable Absolutely. For, for someone catching COVID on their premises. Yeah. Not that you could ever prove that, right? But right. like business owners cannot be taken to court, uh, you know, cannot be sued if someone thinks that they caught COVID in their establishment. I would be perfectly happy with that. And then if any private business wanted to make whatever rules they wanted to, I would feel confident that I would have alternatives yep. that I could go to. But that, but that was where I was at, was like, okay, well, yeah, the federal government or the state is not mandating it, but they're putting so much pressure nope. on these businesses, they feel like they have to. They have to and you nope. don't have a damn alternative to nope. go to, so that's not actually the free market. Nope. If they would at least just pass something making sure business owners were not liable, I, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, and we know they're not because how would you ever prove where well, you would right, find? But, but if they did that, to to but to your point though, even today in Texas, when you go around, the only places right now you see that ask you to wear a mask are places that are still tethered to the government yep. that are still get <laughs> the funding. The airport, the airport, hospitals. I had never had a problem until yeah, this the, week. The airport, hospitals, mm -hmm. like like imaging centers for like mm -hmm. X-rays and imaging centers. Those are the places that's because they're pharma man. <laughs> yeah. They're t they're still being fed. Yep. They, they're still the stray cat that shows up at midnight. Go feed me, and the government's <laughs> right. still feeding them. But nobody else is doing it, right? And so. No, I'm, I'm with you on that, uh, but but to that point, people don't want this. They don't want this in their business. They want they want people to come in, and so I think those who are going to continue to say wear a mask in Florida or in Texas are going to hurt. Well, I, gonna I hurt. think at this point, for sure. I mean, definitely, if that alternative is, is is proposed, like if you have a business, doesn't matter what it is, and you have a competitor that's like, you know, they're going to enforce that yeah. stupid stuff, right. and then yes. a competitor across right. the street is like. We're not. Yeah. Right. What do you think? People, they, can, yes. they can tweet all day long. Yes. They can virtue signal. Yes. But I guarantee you, most of the people are going to go to yeah. the place where they can be yes. themselves. Yeah. And yeah. this is why I think it has to be the focal point is focusing on what what are, what is those what are those government coercive measures that yeah. are out there? A lot of them are even beyond our head or rather beyond our scope as far as what we can see, because there's a lot of under the table bull crap. You bring up a great point Yaku, with like in the airports. Why do you think that is? Is it because, I don't know, they were laced up with all of these damn grants uh, uh, yep. uh, recently? Oh, there's and, a lot of behind uh, the scenes. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of pay, pay to play. Of course, so they're going to say, well, the government is requiring us to do that. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the money is tied to our, our money is tied to this. So, of course, they're going to continue to play ball. But once that's removed... You'd be surprised if oh, these they'll guys, drop, they'll, yeah. they'll drop like, all right, well, we, we can't require. For one, they don't want to enforce it. Right. Imagine, right. They don't want to do that. They, yeah. don't want to have to, they don't want to have to enforce those silly rules. So they wouldn't if you just got the coercive measures out of the way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bingo. All right. Uh, more in Texas news really quickly. So U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland uh, actually threatened legal action if Governor Greg Abbott does not rescind an executive order that uh, Garland says is both dangerous and unlawful. Now, let me tell you what the executive order is. It, uh, Abbott just issued this this week. It says, no person other than a federal, state, or local law enforcement official shall provide ground transpor transportation to a group of migrants who have been detained by uh, Customs and Border 
protection for crossing the border illegally or who would have been subject to expulsion under the Title 42 order. Uh, now, he, by the way, he did say this is because uh, we've seen all of these illegal immigrants flooding into the state, many of them COVID positive. The federal government has, well, I'm sorry, the federal government in partnership with the Catholic Charities has been putting them up in hotel rooms, not alerting local authorities. Uh, so, you know, if COVID is a big deal, yeah. I feel like probably they, the federal government should be like, hey, actually, thanks for doing that. That's actually a great idea. Um, but now you have the federal government instead uh, threatening legal action, threatening to sue Texas um, it, because they said uh, nobody should be providing ground transportation to illegal immigrants. I don't know. Call me crazy. I feel like that's a little bit contradictory. A hundred percent. And And look... Come on, Merrick, let's go. Let's go federal government against the Republic of Texas. <laughs> Come you. on, let's That's go. It's time. I, let's go. I've been go. waiting for this party I've been for waiting for this time. for a long time, man. <laughs> this, this is the pay-per-view you want to sell out. You know, this. Come on, let's go. If, Gub, if Abbott can just have the gumption to say, bring it on. Finally, bring it on, okay? Because there's such an overstep and an overreach by the federal government thinking, you know, other states don't have this luxury. Actually, they do, but Texas has a particular insulation, mm -hmm. right, that other states may not have. And I say it's about time. Let's go. This is, this is the fight that has to happen to set a precedent in this country to make these guys understand we can shut that border down if we want to. We can shut it down. By the way, I just want to bring into the conversation, there is um, a breaking report that says federal whistleblowers uh, say that the Biden administration directed them to downplay the COVID outbreak in a migrant facility over here in Texas. So I'm, I, if I had Good. pearls, I would clutch them. I, for one, am shocked and just appalled shocked that the Biden about, administration like, like, would like do that. Like all of it, that they lectured us about, they kind of made this sort of ex exemption for a particular uh, yeah. group of people. That's my take from this is the conflict that it, we're starting to see, which I have been advocating for a very long time between the federal government and the, uh, the states. Now, look, what the actual position is, the liberty minded position is, a, is an entirely different conversation. However, I think we, we should be able to agree that decentralization is more preferable to centralization, yeah. which is more so what they're what they're pushing for. Texas, like you mentioned, is in a unique position, not just with this uh, with with its location, but also with its economy that it can really tell the federal government to go screw themselves. And there's not much that they could do. Yeah. But what I would love for that to happen out of that, which is more than likely what would happen if Texas goes and does it. Well, you have other states and members in those other states that said, well, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be getting bullied around by these uh, these weirdos that are out of Washington. We want out, too. Right. Yeah. And maybe this starts to have a momentous effect for the country where people start to, let's say, instead of having, I don't know, people that we will never meet in our lives who don't care for us, who are completely disconnected to how this uh, this part of the country is even operating from a like cultural standpoint, a like value system, value system. Mm -hmm. maybe they shouldn't be ruling over us. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe they shouldn't be. And again, I know that's an uncomfortable situation for a lot of people, a conversation to have, because I get we value the principles of the country, but that's what we value. It's not the, the 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 government it's right. the principles that you think the country stands for why do we have to be ruled over by those people these are the actions that actually moves a culture civil discourse where you go i'm standing on my rights and i'm not burning buildings down to right. zero but this is where we and this is why i say abbott you be, this is a gumption buddy this is if they come and, and they call you on a fight right we always say fighters take the call yeah Put it back in their court and say, you want to come? Let's go. <laughs> and you watch these cowards back down. Or if they go, we're going to celebrate because we're going to steamroll them. <laughs> I mean, we're going to run over them like, like a freight train. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. All right. We've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Candid. So I got to tell you, I 
I, my parents spent a lot of money on my teeth when I was younger and I had the retainer and everything like that. And when I got older, I was like, I'm not wearing a retainer every night when I go to bed. That's so annoying and super uncool. So I didn't. And wouldn't you know it, my teeth shifted and I was like, I, now my teeth are crooked again. This is, the, why did I do this? Why did I do this? So if that story sounds familiar, because maybe that's what you did as well, You've got to take a look at Candid, okay? Candid is an invisible, comfortable, removable aligner. And uh, it, so it's gonna do the same thing that braces would do, but you don't have a bunch of metal in your mouth. And oh, by the way, it's going to save you a ton of money because Candid actually does everything directly to your home. Uh, by the way, you're gonna have an orthodontist, an actual orthodontist who is an expert in tooth movement who is going to monitor and prescribe everything for you. So you know that you're getting the experts, you get it shipped directly. I mean, literally everything was shipped directly to me. I had, um, they sent me all of the impressions that you like mix and you do the impressions, you ship them back and then they ship you everything that you need in this really organized box with all of the different steps in there. You just switch out your retainer when it's time to switch it out. The average candid treatment is just six months and you will start seeing results way before then. I did, so save yourself some money. Get yourself some straighter teeth. Get the brighter smile you've always wanted. Right now, you can save $75 on your Candid Starter Kit if you go to candidco.com slash why. That is candidco.com slash why. Uh, all right, a British fashion journalist faced a lot of outrage, I would say rightfully so, yesterday after suggesting that children should be watching um, entry-level Pornography. This is Flora Gill. She said, someone needs to create porn for children. Hear me out. Young teens are already watching porn, but they're finding hardcore, aggressive videos that give terrible view of sex. They need entry-level porn, a softcore site where everyone asks for consent and no one gets choked, etc. cetera. Um, I have a feeling that uh, both of you will have something to say about this, specifically the gentleman to my left. By the way, just so you guys know, she did delete the tweet yep. and was just so frustrated that um, people were still latching onto it because she's like, I deleted it. Why can't we just let it die? Oh, I don't know, because you're just like the lowest like scum uh, of society and we feel the need to call you out. Yeah, and I think the viewers know what we do literally every day. Uh, rescue, what you do. Yeah, what, what I do, yes. you know. And so I wrote back to her and said, okay, you need attention, so how about now we're going to give you attention. We're going to direct some of our resources to her because obviously you're promoting the sexual exploitation of children. You know, porn to kids. The average age of porn entry in America, just so you know now, are boys age eight. Eight. This woman is promoting Sickening. porn for children. So it would be equivalent of, well, well listen, we're going to give you a drug to prime you and get you ready so you can graduate to heroin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's the most potent drug on the planet is porn. That may be controversial. Deal with it. If you watch porn, you're part of the problem. 100%. We may have to come and knock on your door and say, hey, one day, are you exploiting children? Because obviously she's a porn consumer. She may be part of the industry. She may be in porn. She's justifying it with children. But the sad part about this, as many of us there are fighting the Ex sexual exploitation of children, this is my proof there are maybe more promoting the exploitation of children yeah. than they wanted. This is your sa same tranny movement, your, your drag queen story hour, your, you know, your comprehensive sex ed in the classroom talking to 10-year-olds you know, about sex and sexual positions, 5-year-olds in, you know, in kindergarten about you know, self-stimulation and crap. This is how it is. And if you have any tolerance to this, if you read this and you went, yeah, that makes sense. It starts soft, okay? You, you are please, scum. Please don't have children. You're scum. I mean, please no, no, you, you're part of the problem because yeah. you're the type of person that one day end up exploiting a child. And so we should not let this slide. Mm -hmm. We should go after her with hellfire, mm -hmm. right? And people who have supported her like this, right? So we'll see. I wrote and see what she writes back. But there's so many, so many. That, that think, yeah, this is this is a good solution. Yeah, well, and that's the problem, is that it's not just this woman. The New York Times actually recently defended a school counselor, uh, I think it was in New York, who showed a video, uh, you know, trying to teach five and six-year-olds how to masturbate. Yeah, I mean, and I, we talked about it uh, on the show not too long ago about one of those, I can't remember which publication it was, where the chick was talking about 
uh, like the pride parades and she wanted her kids to be exposed to these different mm -hmm. kind of kinks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Now look, uh, I, I thought what well, we could agree just at bare minimum that the kids were kind of out of out, off out, limits. Off, yeah, it's off limits. Like if you in uh, some weird stuff, I might be against it or or, or whatever. Uh, but to 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 try to place that on the kids, I do understand that's a conservative like effort. They're trying to do that because mm -hmm. they want to normalize sort of this subject matter uh, for future generations. And what better way to do that than to obviously go directly at the kids? You normalize it with them. They normalize it uh, as, as an adult. But they don't seem to understand, which is why she's so confused how egregious that actually is what it is that you're trying to promote to youngsters see i believe that the whole point of the parent um and the point of children is to obviously preserve their innocence and um you know as adults obviously yes. preserving their innocence yes. keeping them away from it look I do understand things happen people get older they get into whatever they get into and we can have that conversation now uh or when that happens but to act as if this is something worth pushing and I think even if you are in that industry, if you are even flaky on that subject matter, you need to really check yourself because there sh they should be off limits. That's something that they shouldn't even be within the realm of something that is a positive thing to push for. But it goes to show from a societal cultural standpoint kind of right. where we're at right. to where someone feels that emboldened, that comfortable to get out there and tweet that with a blue check mark so we know they're verified. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an actual person, not a troll, to put that out there to the public to be like, you know what, why don't we do it? Yeah. That says a lot more than just what meets the eye. Something else is going on. And from a cultural standpoint, when we talk about actual degeneracy, that's what we're moving yeah. towards. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar. So uh, if you are like me, you try to look after your health, right? But you kind of have a sweet tooth. I've got a huge sweet tooth and I know better than to put a bunch of like Snickers and candy bars in my pantry. So what I do is I snack on Built Bar because Built Bar is, it's a protein bar. It's healthy for you. It is high in calorie. I'm sorry, it's high in, it's not high in calories. It's high in protein and high in fiber and low in calories and carbs. They're great for keto diets, which I do. Um, and they taste like you're eating a candy bar so you can feel like you're cheating on your diet and get that sweetness and not actually expand your waistline. So if you go to the Built Bar website, they've got a ton of different awesome flavors. You can get a mix box and you can get two of each of their regular nine flavors. Figure out which ones you like the best and then you can reorder just those if you'd like. But I am telling you, you guys have got to get on this deal. There are so many of you out there who have, you know, <laughs> If you go to our podcast reviews and you read the reviews, I'm actually offended because there are more reviews about Built Bar than there are about your host. All right, but that's how good they are. So but you gotta go. That's not right. You, Eat Built Bar. You, I need one today. It's, it's, I need one. Okay, cut. After I, this I will, I'll get I you some. I know you have some. Yes, here. I'm the Built Bar dealer of the yeah. building. I do have them in my dressing room. <laughs> uh, you gotta go to built.com. Use promo code News15 to save 15% off of your order. It is News 15, only at Built, B-U-I-L-T, Built.com. Uh, also, because my producer is the best, he just brought us a uh, Built Bar. Yep. The I, whole I'm box of grasshopper cookies. I'm literally cookie, eating it he, on the set. Yeah, Yaku was like, well, fact. like oh my one. gosh, thank you so much. And he really yep. is, he's eating yep. it. So Have we to. love our Built Bars here at Blaze TV. Uh, all right, so last story of the day. Um, we've got a couple minutes here and I, we were going to do something, but I was like, you know what? Eric is talking about what's going on with Disney and Scarlett Johansson. And I'm just going to let you go ahead and tell everyone. I think this is something that people should pay attention to because the industry might be at a point to where it's going to flip on its head uh, mm -hmm. with this whole COVID nonsense. The reason why this is so intriguing is because of what make, you know, the outcome. Just for a quick backstory, basically Scarlett Johansson, she has baked into her contract that she gets a certain uh, portion of the box office. So with this movie, unlike previous movies, I would say, and I would say previous movies, uh, they've been doing this throughout the pandemic, but this particular movie was released on Disney Plus, which is their streaming service. So you could get it at, the, go to the theater and see it, but you can also just pay, I think it was like 30 bucks uh, and see it you know, at your home, if that's something that you wanted to do. And that wasn't like, OK, it was an exclusive for like a week. And then, no, you could do that right when the movie came yeah. out. So she's looking at it and the people that I represent are like, wait a minute, y'all screwed us. You're breaching a contract and we have a bit of a, a bit of like woke on woke crime going on here. Now, the interesting thing is 
Hollywood, and this is the angle that I took, the Hollywood elites have been the first ones that were lecturing you guys about shutting down mm -hmm. the mask mm -hmm. mandates, um, you know, sit down, lay in a bubble because they thought that their bacon didn't depend on that. Well, you're starting to see now, wait a minute, wait a minute, it impacts me mm -hmm. because Disney, if you go watch their response, a spokesperson, I believe, spoke with Deadline and they said, no, no, no. How dare you even get mad at us? There was a pandemic. COVID-19 was the reason <laughs> that they, of course, had this release as such. And they were actually like, how, how they were like clutching their pearls. If right. you actually read it, it was like, how dare you even criticize us for doing such a thing? So it's going to be interesting, the outcome of this, because a lot of people that like executive produce that are also acting in it, they get a little money on the back end. And if it's going straight to streaming, well... You know, they're not going to get that money. So maybe they'll start to wait a minute. Maybe maybe this whole lockdown thing and all of these mandates, maybe that's not what it is, the direction that we want to want to no. go in because it's impacting their bottom line. I don't think they knew they that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, look, just as a film director, you broke the theater system. You can't right. complain now. Yeah. But if you look at Keanu Reeves, his deal, you know, the deal Keanu did, that's really when this came in. Hey, I'll take a little less up front, but I'll take a theatrical distribution. It's called from PNA print and advertising in the theater. Now it's going to bite them because they broke it. <laughs> yeah. They broke it. So, but it's our hypocritical always like, wait a minute. Now it's touching my money. Yeah. My money? <laughs> it's it's, just, it's your people. You people. <laughs> it was when the, peasants, when the peasants and you guys' businesses exactly. shut down. Yeah. You were supposed yeah. to do that. You can't, you know, wait a minute. Wait, hold up. It's impacting me now. Yeah. It's impact, and I believe she got like $20 million. They, I don't think they're even supposed to do that. This is why it was so unorthodox and why I think people should pay attention because Disney almost never does that. Well, they respond themselves publicly, not yeah. on the back end, yeah, yeah, yeah. publicly. Yeah. And they say, well, we gave you $20 million. Mm -hmm. You already you got your money. How dare you even yeah. get mad at this? So it's going to be interesting to see if this sort of is a domino. But effect the opportunism, the opportunism, and I can guarantee you now inside Disney, they were like, well, we can save five percent, boys. Yeah. If we go straight to streaming, right, they will cannibalize their own. OK, <laughs> they don't. I've always said Hillary Clinton will eat her young. They don't <laughs> care. OK, they will literally cannibalize their own because they don't care about you. It's about People them. Are it. Theaters, the theaters, I forget what that actual organization is, like the own theater owners association or something like that. Yeah. They were also mad at Disney for the same exact movie, for the same exact reason. While Disney, like you said, they're probably in a, their big executives are like, wait a minute, if we put this out on our own, yeah, they won't get their money, but we get more We get more of the cut. But, but there's a contract, right? And their contract, block contract, they're contracted, for instance, with AMC. They have to push certain titles to AMC, but now they got an excuse. Well, it's COVID. Oh, co yep. Right. Yep. Well, it's guys, come on, you can't. The rules have changed now. It's COVID. <laughs> I mean, you know. I love to see it. Sounds like Nancy. Just, no, we all. It sounds like for, Nancy I'm just Pelosi. For injuries. I don't it even. Sounds have like a Nancy side. Pelosi. Well, yeah. come on now. It's me. It's Nancy. Right. right. <laughs> I can go to the salon. Yeah, of course, of course. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> oh, I love to see it. Great. Hey, this is the part of the program where I tell you that my entire life's happiness hinges upon you taking 10 seconds to go to wherever you get your audio podcasts, subscribe, rate, and review the news and why it matters. I was actually crying before we got on air. I was I was crying, right? You guys are not helping me sell this at all. <laughs> I was crying because I was just thinking about people not going to go so do So do you want to hold our hands, Sarah? This is yeah. what we're saying. Rate yeah. the show. This is the greatest TV host on air on oh, any gosh. platform. You're Rate the nice. show, please. You're, you're too nice. People are liberated through this show. Please. They well, are. That, is true. That, is true. that is true. That is true. I'm not blowing smoke. Uh, and... As an added bonus, if you go write a nice review, give us five stars, you may see your review read live on air, like the one today from Not Yo Buzz, who says, awesome show, tuned in, thanks to Young Rippa a few months ago, and I have never missed an episode ever since. The show is very informative, and everyone offers a very pleasant vibe. Keep up the great work. Well, he must have not been watching me for long because I'm not always pleasant. <laughs> I can say Sometimes. that. But <laughs> most of the time. Inter do people interpret pleasantries differently? Most Listen, young Ripper. Is there an old Ripper? No. no I'll just, it's just, even when I'm 40, and I'll he still be young. Gonna be, young Ripper. Still be never going to be young old Ripper. Ripper. Yeah, always young Ripper. I love that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to see Texas Ripper at the federal government. <laughs>